Hello my dear students, welcome to another episode with me, Ashwin Abraham, Enlightenment Through Knowledge. Here, I came not for having the sections of main English, by reading the word, the sentence, we can identify that today we are going to see grammar part. Yes, moving forward, uh, I will be teaching grammar for high school sections like 8, 9 and 10. And we have a book. Uh, previously, I have shown you the book, High School English Grammar and Composition, Run and Martin. So, this is, uh, I can say, uh, this is a holy Bible of grammar, like we can say that. So, Bible like grammar. So, uh, for gra uh, that is about uh, Run and Run. And I will be teaching uh, grammar sections from help of this book, not from any other videos, not from any other books, only from Run and Martin. And I will make sure that you will be getting the PDF of this uh, book. And um, one more thing, uh, when school reopens or uh, because of th this lockdown, we can't uh, transport this book here. So that's the reason uh, we are not having the book. But may I will make sure that you will be getting the PDF of this one. So moving forward with the sentence, just come back. Not we are not going uh, moving forward. Uh, what do you mean by um, grammar, or uh, how well you are capable of using English grammar? Uh, just pause the video and think for some time. How good your communication skill? How good you are using the uh, sentences? How good you are playing with the sentences? So that okay. So don't worry so in lower classes we learn some rules or some the structure of uh, english grammar and now we will be focusing on more about this uh, grammar english grammar and before i will give some instance what happened when you were in inner classes or in the lower sections if i ask you or a teacher ask you tell me an example of a declarative sentence then you used to play, he is playing uh, in the ground or on the ground, you will be saying like that or you will be saying he, I'm a boy or I'm a girl, you used to say that type of or that sort of examples but hereafter uh, moving forward by seeing the video uh, of me uh, by the help of the book Ryan Martin, you will be seeing much and more um, as some beautiful examples okay you will be playing with the words you will be shooting the words like very strong thing okay uh, using the grammar or using the language that type you should use that and it's not like I'm you know, just kidding or joking with these things I'm very serious about this my students or those people who are seeing my video you should be like moreover like you want to have the knowledge or the uh, the 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 beautiful the be how you, how much you can beautify a sentence using your vocabularies. So that will be uh, the next we will be seeing about that. So moving forward with the sentences. Moving forward, what do we mean sentences? Sentences. Okay, for writing or for uh, speaking, we are using words, right? We not only use one word, we use multiple words and uh, we want to express our thought and idea in a meaningful way. So that is sentence. How, how it is sentence? So when we uh, write group of words or when we speak group of words which got a meaningful sense is called sentences. Here, see here, little Jack Horner sat in a corner. So that's an example. So uh, we want to improve in our uh, examples with the instance which we are given for the sentences. Little Jack Horner sat in a 
कौन ना सो प्रीवियसली वी वर यूजिंग ओनली शॉर्ट वर्ड्स और टू और थ्री वर्ड्स एंड वी आर मेकिंग डिक्लेरेटिव नो हियर आफ्टर यू विल बी फोकसिंग मोर लाइक दिस लिटिल जैक कॉर्नर सैट इन ए कॉर्नर दैट अबाउट द सेंटेंसेस एंड यू नो व्हाट आर द काइंड्स ऑफ द सेंटेंसेस देयर आर मेनली फोर काइंड्स डिक्लेरेटिव एंड असर्टिव व्हाट आई मीन बाय डिक्लेरेटिव एंड असर्टिव um when we give a declaration to uh, something that like humdi dumdi sat on a wall humdi dumdi sat on a wall so that's a assertion a declaration we are giving the uh, that is about declarative and what me interrogative interrogative the question words question sentences is called interrogative sentences where do you go how are you so that is type of interrogative okay now imperative imperative means the expression the uh, when we uh, is, uh, ask for the suggestion sentence uh, uh, request sentence or uh, command sentence these types of sentences are called imperative sentences and don't think that only um, please and kindly is a request sentence not only really using the word not only really using uh, the word please and kindly we are making request sentences but they are like we nowadays like we pray to god how mercy on us so that is a request sentence but we thought you sing please and kindly so that is an example like that and exclamatory exclamatory which we are having a strong feelings when we have a strong anger god good heavens we are using that type of uh, the words when we are having anger and some wh exclamation like um, um, how romantic the night is like that is another exclamatory uh, sentence we are using so the, uh, that's all about the kinds of sentences moving to the second chapter subject and predicate everything under the sky got a name can be a living thing or it can be a non living thing but everything is having a name have a subject to speak about have a subject to speak about say something about the subject so everything everything or everyone should have something to tell about and tell about that subject so we are just concluding that for in a sentence if there will be two parts or other words we can say that a sentence is divided into two part that is subject and predicate moving forward part which names the person i said about everything under the sky got a name the part which names the person is what subject part which tells about that subject parts which tells about the subject is called predicate clear so the part which names the person or a thing that is subject and what does the subject do or uh, the part which tells about the subject is called predicate so you will be more clear when when we see an example see by an example things will be more easy to you okay so here we will be seeing an example and that thin air will be fresh in front of you so the early bird catches the worm part which names the person so everything under the sky got a name so what's the name here the early bird right see the second one which tells something about the subject which tells something about the subject why a subject does catches the verb catches the verb that is predicate okay something names here the bird and something tells about the subject that is catches the verb so you got predicate so we divided the sentence into two and that is early bird that is subject catches the verb that is predicate clear okay. so going forward with the grammar subject 
Uh, we have seen one example for uh, subjectal predicate. The early bird catches the worm. Can you guess uh, what is the idea behind that sentence? That is some beautiful sentence. That is a beautiful example I given. But it uh, got a hidden meaning there. A early bird catches early bird catches the worm. So if you are good in your studies, do if I'm posting the video today and you are writing the notes very clearly and the same time as the say uh, after just after watching that you are making notes and uh, it won't be a burden for you, right? So the early bird catches the worm. So like that we will be seeing more examples. So hereafter the instance of each grammar uh, chapters or grammar portions will be like that. We will move forward, move ahead to some standard way of using uh, English uh, and uh, using examples. We forget about these things which when we are in a high, high and lower sections we were using some examples. We forget about just rub it, everything and we will more focus on this sort of examples and this sort of using Englishes. Okay, English words. There are some things you should keep in your mind when you are dealing with uh, subject and predicate. You know that most probably or 99 percentage subject comes first then follows predicate, right? But here one case is there like this uh, case. Here comes the best. Here comes the best. What is the subject here? The best is the subject here and predicate here comes. But for the grammatical sense we are using here comes the best. So the better grammatical usage we are using like this. So here after the predicate subject follows like there are some cases. There goes a man, there goes a man like that. Goes a man there some grammatical mistake will be there. So, for a better usage of grammar, we are using like that. Okay, and another one case, in imperative, you know what is imperative, we have seen, right? In imperative sentences, subject is opt out. We can't see the subject. Actually, subject is invisible there, but uh, invisible subject, there is a subject, but that is invisible. We are just opting it out, like imperative, sit down, clear, an example, sit down, another example, thank him, but there is a subject, but we are not using that, you, for both, you sit down, you thank him, that is a command, okay, both are command, sentence, so in the imperative, you sit down, you thank him, but you is opt out here in this imperative sentence. So when we are dealing with subject and predicate, keep these things in your mind. So I hope sentence that was the first chapter and chapter two subject and predicate. So everything is clear for you. If you have any doubt regarding these two chapters, Please contact me. I will be there for you at your service. Okay? And uh, that's all for today. Have a great day ahead.